All right, today I'm gonna give you guys a detailed look at this SciShow exclusive Iron Man Mark One. This is by Hot Toys, and this is the um, diecast version of Mark One. And uh, let's see, there's the box. And it slides out like that, and then there's the back of the box. So let's get into it. All right, and here we have Iron Man Mark One diecast version outside of packaging, and uh, here are all the accessories that uh, this figure comes with. Uh, first, we have this really nice looking base, which I'll, let me see, I'll show you guys right now, like that, with a little plaque up in the front, it says Iron Man, down here says Mark 1, and then a couple of beams, kind of cool, uh, it's all made out of plastic, of course, and then we have this base, which uh, I believe we have gotten this one before, through the, um, uh, I think it was uh, version 2 of the regular uh, Mark one i think we have gotten this before and then of course the rod to keep him standing up and then uh comes with a set of hands and uh not a whole lot of accessories actually a uh, set of flames and then if you got the exclusive you would have this this is basically a raw cast of the uh, mark one helmet and uh, it is made out of uh, metal and it opens up it just ha it hasn't gotten the uh, weathering effect on it, so yeah. So there's the figure itself. All right, so let us take a look at the figure itself now, and uh, it's uh, very very pretty. It's definitely um, heavier than the uh, plastic version, of course. Um, let's see now uh, the base does not come with a uh, piece to attach uh, this on there. So I would imagine uh, if you are using this base, then uh, you got to be a little bit careful. Uh, even though the ankles are really tight, so I don't think he's going to topple over. But uh, if you're going to display him with this base, then you got to be a little bit careful with it. Uh, so let us take a closer look at the front. Iron Man Mark 1 is my favorite armor. And... The rest of him. Look at all the detailing on him. All the wires that's running uh, around uh, through his body, through his armor. And here's a side view of the armor. And here we have the back view. And here's the other side. Alright, let us uh, open up the face mask to take a look at that uh, Tony Stark head sculpt. So there it is. Let me lower his head down a little bit so it's, it's a little bit better. So there's the head sculpt um, of uh, Robert Downey Jr. Now, um, is this the best likeness of Robert Downey Jr. from Iron Man? From Iron Man, um, not sure. Uh, it looks good. I mean, I could definitely tell it's Robert Downey Jr. But is this the best head sculpt that we have gotten from Hot Toys? I am. I don't think so. Uh, it's good, but not as good as uh, other ones we have gotten, in my opinion. So, but uh, there it is. Uh, there's no eye movement or anything like that with this one. Uh, I know they started doing the um, the moving eyeballs on regular figures now, but uh, not on this one. So yeah, this is really tight. Uh, the cover for for the for the face mask is pretty tight. So yeah, mm. and um, let me give you a closer look at all the parts. All right, so I have a portable. Um, a battery pack and uh, it's a uh, it needs a micro USB and then it feeds into the uh, onto the back of the um, tank right here so once you oh, come on focus once you attach the USB cable there and then uh, same as the other ones there's a button back here which is this one this one right here uh, once you press it then you would you will see uh, you will hear it. You will hear the motor running. 
the fan back here is rotating at a pretty high speed actually I, I actually wanted to go a little slower if possible but I can't can't adjust it so let me rotate him back over here and then you can see on the arm right there there's a red light right there and then on his chest his arc reactor lights up and I believe that's everything all the, all the lights on him which is kind of cool I mean uh, yeah the fact that there's a motor running on the back there uh, on the back uh, on the back of him uh, so but it's constantly running <laughs> and it's pretty loud actually you could hear it yeah and here's that red light let me see if I could dim it down so you guys can see it a little bit better right there there's a red light and then there's a, a reactor right there uh, let me rotate him back and back here there's the the rotating fan right there really cool I like it uh, I like it quite a bit actually so yeah that's uh, that's something different which I'm very happy about um, um, let's see okay let me turn this off okay so you guys can see the rotating motor back here and then I guess uh, before uh, the other versions uh, you would put the batteries in, uh, in this compartment right here for the lights to come on but uh, this is a had a feature that they didn't do before so that is really nice and uh, might as well look at the, uh, the intricate detailing of this figure now so back here a lot of tubings uh, again kind of like the um, the old one where it has these uh, spring like tubing these um, yeah so I guess it won't break that easily because if you use uh, rubber tubings I think uh, they will deteriorate over time uh, even on the side here they did use uh, rubber tubings uh, same here over, over on the shoulder these are rubber tubings and then only the ones that are back here are actually metal and then it runs all the way through the legs all the way down here and then over on this side see this is cool there's a little pack back here and it also has wires running through and, uh, yeah they did a fantastic fantastic job with this and then uh, the outfit that he has on underneath it's um is it a different material than the previous version I'm not quite sure it doesn't look as uh, uh, the previous version has more of a sway like material but uh, this new version doesn't have that doesn't look like it yeah colors uh, it's about the same as the previous version all right so let me go over articulation uh, should have pretty okay articulation here head is on a ball joint uh well base of the neck there's a ball joint so it sits um yeah it sits right uh, over the, uh above the i mean uh, base of the neck and yeah, there's the joint right there so it gives them a uh, full range of motion you look up look down there's nothing uh, underneath the uh the head itself and then as far as shoulder is concerned um can this one go out anymore this one's kind of this one can go a little further out than this one I don't know why uh, so it might just be something's caught over here but in any case uh, this yeah for some reason this shoulder can go a little higher than this one yeah and then uh, rotation you wouldn't go 360 with these because it has a, a cloth outfit that he's wearing so yeah and then uh, elbows ooh, very limited it's only it's not even 90 degrees uh, on this one's a little bit better it could do almost it could do almost 90 degrees it's like a 45 50 this one is very little you can see right here it's very limited range on this arm right there and then as far as the torso is concerned let me see here you get a little bit of movement right here yeah decent amount 
uh, it does hinder it a lot because the armor, how it's designed, so there's nothing you can do about that. And then as for the legs, let's see here, uh, I could go about that much, that's pretty much it because it does hinder the articulation a bit uh, with this uh, armor piece right there. And then the knees could bend, can it go 90? It can almost go 90 degrees on this side, on this side as well can go almost 90 degrees it is on a somewhat of a ratcheting system and then the ankles I believe is on ball joints and uh, it's pretty stiff so that's good for the ankle ankle is the most important part because uh, it's gonna it's gonna support pretty much the whole figure and this figure is die cast so um, let's see as far as uh, what pieces are die cast let's see the f let me rotate them back up show you guys uh, the whole helmet is die cast the shoulder piece is die cast let's see here bicep uh, this bicep piece no it's plastic and then this outer no this outer piece is plastics too this side on this side this this whole gauntlet piece is plastic on this side yeah it's also plastic yeah the whole gauntlet is plastic and then the chest armor is all one piece right here that's all die cast and then uh, the waist the ring around the waist is plastic um, the crotch piece is plastic yeah or is it die cast this feels like metal oh okay so the crotch piece is different because uh, this front this top portion is die cast while the bottom two panels here are plastic so yeah and then as for the thighs uh, this is all die cast it's all one piece and then on the side here this is plastic so it's just this piece that's running all the way back here that's a uh, die cast and then the side here is plastic and then as for the legs, uh, let's see, the knee, no, no. This piece is die cast. This piece is plastic. And then uh, back here, they're all plastic. Like any of these pieces, yeah, that's plastic. Ooh, it has, it has, a, wait, is it spring loaded or am I just pulling it? Yeah, no, it's spring loaded, but it's attached to the Oh, it's attached to the uh, foot here so yeah it is a little spring loaded and uh, yeah this piece is plastic these are plastic yeah so oh and this panel also plastic so yeah no not a whole lot I mean it's the armor is not fully die cast but there's a good portion of it is die cast but uh, it, it doesn't weight as much as uh, your other die cast armor of course because uh, uh, this one does have more plastic than die cast on it than your other armor that are actually die cast uh, Iron Man so yeah it's a little lighter but still he gets, gives you that little uh, bit of weight uh, if you have the original Mark 1 versus this one then you'll notice that this one is definitely heavier all right, and here we have a side-by-side -side comparison between uh, two uh, Mark I. Uh, now, the one on the left is the plastic one. This is uh, version 2. This is a 2.0. And then the one on the right is the die-cast one. So, uh, let's see. If I turn the light down a little bit, you kind of see the weathering on it is... Um, the weathering on the die-cast one is uh, rich richer. Uh, as deeper, uh, darker uh, than the uh, Mark, the the 2.0 version, and um, and the height is actually a little bit different too. Uh, the the diecast one is a little taller, and um, does it look more accurate? Um, I think they both look pretty much the same as far as um, accuracy, uh, body proportion wise. I think they're both uh, pretty much identical. Um, the die cast one might be a little bit wider uh, around the shoulders and also maybe around the torso maybe a little bit wider but uh, everything else looks very very similar between the two but the the huge difference between the two would be the um, 
the texturing on the armor itself. Now, uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. Let's see, on the die cast, you can see the armor, the uh, especially the helmet. Uh, it's uh, clean, it's uh, as smooth, while the the um, the plastic version, the 2.0, is uh, is very rough. Um, they added more texturing on here. Uh, I don't know whether this is uh, this is definitely not accurate. Here you can see the texturing on it. I mean, you can see some blotches here and there, and then yeah, they definitely add some weathering on it. But it is very nice, though. I mean, uh, I I do really like the fact that it has texturing on it. Uh, it's not just uh, out of uh, paint and all that. It is sculpted on here, so that is nice. But uh, is it accurate? No, it's not. But uh, as a armor itself, I think it does look very nice, though. Now uh, let's take a look at the star cat sculpt here now this one compare to this one uh let's see this is the plastic version the 2.0 this is the die cast version now is there a huge difference between the two not really uh is it even the same sculpt i think it is as actually it's the same sculpt uh only difference is the eyes uh, this one is looking towards uh, the side a little bit while this one's looking straight. So head sculpt wise they are identical. No wonder it didn't look like it didn't look quite amazing because uh, usually uh, if they were doing a figure they would have an amazing head sculpt but uh, for this one not so much. So that's the reason why because it is the exact same uh, face sculpt uh, for Tony Stark here. And then as far as the outfits concerned, actually they are the same type of material. It's just this one's a little lighter, though the plastic one is a little lighter shade of brown, while the die cast one is a darker shade of brown. But uh, the the actual material uh, is exactly the same. It feels exactly the same. It looks exactly the same uh, as far as the um, the fur furriness of it is exactly the same. Um, let's see what else that I could tell not too much uh, let me turn him uh, rotate him to the back so maybe there's a difference between the two okay so looking from the back uh, I mean you still got these metal wires same thing throughout uh, uh, let's see as far as oh there are no there's some wires here there's some wires there so I'm just looking to see if there are extra wires that's running through that wasn't on the uh, plastic version but uh, to me it looks very similar uh, as far as the number of wires that are running through I mean this one this this piece of wire is not there uh, this one is here on the plastic version but not on the die cast but overall, as far as the number of wires, how they are twisted, and um, uh, they look very, very similar. They are pretty much identical. Um, the down here, this panel here, it's uh, it has the silver paint, while this one is darker. Um, this is more silver-like, and this one is uh, not as good. Of a paint job on it this is more um, a champagne ish type of color a darker champagne ish color uh, let's see canister pretty much the same it's just this one it's a uh, this one is lighter in color and this one is a little darker but overall I think for the most part they look very very similar um, as far as uh, what they do to um, improve upon i think the only thing they really did was um giving it uh give, uh giving the uh figure die cast metal uh, die cast pieces and that's about it because um the face scope is exactly exactly the same and uh proportion usually they would update the proportion but uh with the 2.0 i think the proportion is already uh, at its best so they didn't update that too much or at least not that i could tell um, yeah, so pretty much identical. Uh, you, you could clearly see the head sculpts are identical now. Um, but uh, yeah, still a very, very impressive piece. If you don't already have the plastic version, I would definitely say go get the, the, the die cast version. But if you have the, die, uh, if you have the plastic version, 
Uh, you're wondering whether the diecast is needed. I honestly, I don't really think so. Um, yeah, especially if you have the 2.0. The 2.0 already has uh, the best the best uh, elements uh, from the uh, uh, based on the uh, Mark One armor because um, I think the 1.0 was a little off. Uh, I think no, I think 1.0 was pretty much the same too. Uh, I can't find my 1.0 so. Um, but the paint job on the 2.0 is definitely way better than the 1.0. Uh, die cast is it's different, a little, it's, it's uh, smoother, uh, everywhere smoother, but uh, is it, can you justify the purchase with that? No, I don't think so. If you already have the 2.0, if you have this one, then no. There's no reason for you to get the die cast, it's not needed unless you're Unless this armor is your favorite and you're a diehard I'm an Iron Man fan, because otherwise I wouldn't get it. I, if I were you, I wouldn't get it. Alright, so before I close out the video, I just want to show some of the accessories, the difference between the two accessories. Now, uh, this one is from the uh, 2.0 and this is from the diecast. And it uh, looks like the 2.0 has better paint job on it. Uh, it looks more sand, desert-y like. Uh, this one is a little too muted. As far as the color is concerned, this one it pops a little bit more with the, with some of the raised sections painted a different color. Uh, now the um, the Stark uh, rocket, I guess this is uh, it's pretty much identical. Uh, the paint job is just a little lighter on this one than this one. You can see it, and then the the ammo ammo container is almost identical. Yeah, but the piece itself is exactly the same. There's no difference between the two. And then the other thing I want to show you guys is the flame. This is the 2.0. It's much bigger than the uh, diecast version. So you can see it's completely different. Uh, the paint job on it, uh, the diecast one, of course, is much, much nicer as far as the uh, flame is concerned. Yeah, this one's just uh, almost a solid orange color. Uh, there's no real highlights or anything. This one. Uh, you can see there's highlights throughout, so it looks much, much nicer, and it's more transparent. This one's more transparent than this. This is uh, quite muted, uh, creamy-like. Uh, it's more, yeah, so you can't really see through it. But it is much larger. Uh, is that really needed? Does it need to be that big? Um, just uh, personal opinions, I guess. Uh, oh, it's exactly, they just scaled it down. If you can see the flame, how they are, uh, how they are structured, uh, they are identical. So it's just um, they scaled down this version and they made this. So it's exactly the same, but paint job is much nicer. And then uh, it came, uh, it got the, the diecast version comes with two pieces, so one on each arm. Yeah, while the um, the plastic version comes with one only. All right, here are the two exclusives. Uh, from the Mark 1. This is the plastic version and this is the diecast version. So the plastic version comes with the hologram of uh, Mark 1. So when he was uh, taking this apart, um, t turning it into Mark 2, uh, he was looking through this hologram and then start pulling pieces apart and stuff like that. While this one is um, honestly with this even in the film. I mean the front portion was in the film but uh, not the back portion if you are just uh, if he's uh, if you're using this uh, as the as the piece where he was hammering the uh, the the Iron Man armor, then uh, he was showing this. Uh, but it wasn't even it wasn't even all silver either. It was uh, kind of uh, weathered up already. So uh, as far as this version, I don't know what's to use for this. Uh, it wasn't really in the film uh, in this form. So yeah. But that's the exclusive piece that comes with the diecast version, while well, this one is the plastic version. Uh, if you ask me, I actually prefer this more. Well, this is cooler, it looks uh, interesting. Uh, hologram is kind of cool, yeah, it's always uh, kind of interesting to have. And if you have the other ones, then uh, this would be a good addition to that other version. But uh, yeah, this is the diecast one. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. So there you have it, uh, since I already mentioned uh, some of the reasoning as to whether to get this or not, I'm not going to repeat that. So instead I'll just rotate him a little bit and show you guys again before I end this video. Um, yeah. 
I'm happy with this purchase and uh, because it is Mark 1, my favorite armor of all the Iron Man armor. Uh, I think Mark 3 is my second favorite. And um, yeah, so there you have it. There's the Mark 1 from Hot Toys and uh, diecast version. Thanks for watching.